Let's look at the line, stack line and area chart. Same data as earlier. Let's create a chart and change the chart type to a line chart. Now immediately you notice that a line chart is suitable when you have the X axis as a time series. If you notice here, the chart doesn't look incorrect, but it clearly is incorrect. Why? Because it is plotting all the five subcategories on the X axis. Now it doesn't stop you from doing it, but you should never ever keep anything but a time series data on the X axis. How do we fix it? We simply click on switch row column. And this makes a lot more sense because now you can see quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. And you can see how each one of these five subcategories is moving over time. How do we improve the presentation now? The first thing you notice is that none of these subcategories have a number which is lesser than 100, which means that it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have an axis from zero to 200. So like we did earlier, I will double click and I will change the minimum to let's say 90. Now what this does is it makes the chart much more impactful because the range of my Y axis is only from 90 to 210. As a matter of fact, we can make the maximum as 200. And you notice it looks so much more prominent than what it was looking like earlier. Just for comparison, I'm making another chart in which I'm not going to change the axis. And I hope you can see how much better the one on the, the right looks. Despite the fact that both the chart, both the charts are exactly the same size, this one doesn't really make it easy for the person to understand, while this one looks so much more elegant. Let's copy this. Now, in the one on the left, we have an individual number for every single subcategory. The one on the right, I want to change slightly. And we will select the second one, which is a stacked line. Right? Now, when we select this, something has gone wrong, but not to worry. Remember, the reason it is coming incorrectly is because we have locked our axis to 90 to 190. So let's just quickly double click and reset it so that we can see the entire chart now. Now, let's understand what is happening. The one on the left tells me, let me add the data labels so we can see the numbers. The one on the left tells me that Appliances is a hundred, right? And let me also increase the size of these numbers so we can see them clearly. Okay, so the chart on the left tells us that appliances is 100. Then it tells us that tables is 146 and it tells us that furnishings is 167. What we want to find out is the cumulative sales. This means I want to find out that for quarter one, how much was bookcases, how much was bookcases plus chairs, how much was bookcases plus chairs plus furnishings. So if you look on the right, what these numbers will tell us, let me add the numbers here. Okay, let me select the chart once again. Excellent. Let's also add our data label. Now this time you notice the results are very interesting. It is giving me 177, 145, 167, 146 and 100. Let's see what is happening. For quarter one, this is the five number, which is representing individual values for every subcategory. But then why is my Y axis coming like this? The reason is, because it is showing us the cumulative of all the subcategories one over the other, which means if I look at bookcases, it is 177. But if I look at bookcases plus chairs, that would be 177 plus 145, which is about, let's say 312, right? That's exactly what we're trying to find out. So that would be 270 and then 310 and then 322, right? So this 322 is what is being represented here. Again, when we add up 167, 145 and 177, so if I'm adding up these three numbers, let me 
add these three numbers together. What do we get now? So the result we are getting now is the addition of 167, 145, and 177, which is the three subcategories. So bookcases, chairs, and furnishings. So bookcases, chairs, and furnishing together is 521. Again, the question is, why would you want to do a cumulative? The reason is because if you want to find out what is the contribution of the top three subcategories that you have, it is not possible for you to do that in the chart on the left. The chart on the left is great when you want to look at a trend line, but if you want to identify the top N or the bottom N subcategories, then this is what you require, which is the stacked line chart. The final one that we do is the area chart. So I'll just make some space and put it on the right. Let's go to change chart type and select our area chart. Now in area chart, again, we have a few options. We have stacked area and the area. They work exactly like they were working with the line chart. Let's do both of them. So if you select the area chart, it appears like this. Now I notice it doesn't look perfectly correct. Let's try to understand why the problem is happening. Now, because all these areas are overlapping with each other, that's the reason you can't see the area at the back. As a matter of fact, I'll increase the size so you can see this clearly. Let me remove all the numbers as well. Now remember, the reason you can't see all of them is because every single area is hiding the one behind it. If you notice there are five colors, but I can't see behind appliances because appliances is the first layer and we have a different layer for every single subcategory. But what do you do? How do you fix it? Whenever you're working with an area chart, you can simply select the area, double click on it, go to the option, the first one, go to fill. And then if you notice, we can select a solid fill, but more importantly, I can increase the transparency and this allows me to see behind that area. I hope that made sense. Similarly, I can select my second area. I can go to solid fill and same like earlier, I can increase the transparency. So I can see behind that. Now I notice uh, all of you would think, but Havish, does it not require us a lot of effort? Yes, it does. But if you really want to show an area chart, then you will have to go through all this effort because this will allow you to create every level as a transparency like this. Should you do it? I believe that up to you to decide, but this is how you work with an area chart. Let's make one more. So I'll select my data once again, and this time we want to create an area chart, but we select the stacked area chart. And immediately you will notice even in the preview window, that this is much, much better than the previous area chart because here the overlapping problem is not appearing because all the different subcategories will appear one on top of the other. So you notice there are five colors and each one of these colors represent a different subcategory. Makes sense, right? Again, if you go to change area type, we have a third option, which is my 100% stacked area. And this personally is the one that I like the most. Because this one shows you the data like this. Very cool, right? So imagine you're presenting a data like this. It's very simple for a person to understand because you have your 100% on the left and it tells you that for all the four quarters, for each quarter, what percentage contribution was coming from each one of the subcategories. Let's put the numbers inside. Right? So how do we, how do I interpret these numbers for quarter one? These five are the numbers for every subcategory. And it tells me that the total of my first three subcategories was 65%. Makes sense, right? Again, like I said, you will have to practice quite a lot, not because they're difficult to create, but because when you're working with them for the first time, you will not really know for sure which one is it that you want to use. And remember your data sets will be different to the ones that I'm using. So you really, really have to spend a lot of time experimenting with all these four or five different types to see which one you would like to use.